Hey guys, we're right back again. This time we are doing another update video going over the brand new hero. Once again, we have some more news that was dropped on the Vanguard Twitter page showcasing her passive, the Githian Promise, as well as one of her other abilities, which they didn't really give a name, but I assume based on they keep using this word, it's blink which is essentially her teleport right so let's go ahead and show off those we also have a couple clips as well that showcase the ultimate and just how she plays mechanically throughout each match uh, so we'll go ahead and get to that as well but first of all let's go ahead and show off the Githian promise to pass up so you'll see there on the screen so she has these daggers as we kind of already figured that out from the first video I made that actually glow so I, I'm assuming that her passive this is all I can really gather. I assume her passive uh, is activated after X amount of seconds. So of not being in combat for maybe like 10 seconds, she will activate her passive, which makes her daggers glow. And when they do glow, she will go ahead and inflict extra damage, CP damage, mind you, on the next target you hit with that passive activated. Uh, so you can see Kinetic takes quite a blow from that passive there. Uh, when she does walk away, the daggers are no longer glowing, so that is in fact the passive. Uh, unless that's so coincidental, but I'm pretty sure that's the passive effect. Uh, and so, I'm trying to determine what it would be. Would it be just maybe like a tension bow proc? Where it's just a set amount of burst damage, maybe based off your level. Uh, so the higher level you become, uh, the more damage it does by default. Um, or, and of course that would be CP, not a weapon power based burst damage. So it would be like Tension Bow, but a CP uh, like form of it. Or maybe it's based off percent health. There's a lot of that type of mechanic and a lot of heroes in Vanglory, percent health damage. Or maybe it's based off of a percent of your total CP that you have in your build. So if you actually go top in CP, and try to maximize the amount of CP you can have at any given any given time. That passive may be doing a percent of that max CP. So, just to kind of put it into like a ballpark, maybe you had like 400 CP, and you're doing like 20% of that CP in total as extra damage. So that would be what 80. 80 extra damage just to kind of just give you a general idea it would probably be a higher percentage given the damage we're seeing here which is like 300 something but regardless um maybe that's how it works maybe it's a percent off the maximum cp you have on your character so to recap so maybe it's a tension bow proc like effect but it's cp damage where it's just a straight amount and that amount maybe fluctuates based on your level alone or it might be um, is it health based. Maybe it's health based. Or it might be just pure CP and it's based off a ratio of total CP you have. Uh, or maybe it's just it has its own individual ratio based on CP. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking what's happening there. Uh, pretty cool though. That means that she's going to be really good for ganks. Uh, you're going to want to have that passive up before you engage because as soon as you engage you're going to do a huge amount of burst damage and you're going to really be devastating especially for the squishy characters i got a sense of op coming here in update 3.5 especially once you guys see the next video so let's go ahead and get into that one so here's the next one so here is the blink is what i'm going to call it for now uh and so basically as we can see uh, the ability, I think the ability actually has two activations here. So the first activation is where you actually throw a dagger at a target. I think that's what that is. And then you have X amount of seconds to activate it again to teleport to that target. So I think that's what we're seeing. Because I don't remember her actually on her passive she actually did melee so meaning her her basic attack is melee so therefore that that dagger that she's throwing is not her melee attack it, it's not her basic attack it, it's actually the activation of the 
blink ability, at least the first activation, second activation being the blink itself. Uh, and maybe that, that actual mark on the target would cause to do extra damage too to that target once you blink. Who knows? Or, or you just do damage when you blink. I don't know. Uh, but there we go. So there's that one. Not much more to say about that as far as what we're seeing. It's pretty clear as day. Uh, but I definitely have to say that's going to be really, really crazy because I don't know the extended range on how far a target can be until it breaks that mark so where you can't teleport to them. But imagine if you mark somebody and they sprinted to their base and you sprinted to your base and you're still within that given time of you know being able to teleport for the second activation and you activate it and all of a sudden they're dead <laughs> in their base that'd be cool like you could teleport across the map <laughs> I i'm sure there's some limitations of how far you can teleport but we'll see in the next video that there is quite a distance that you can in fact teleport using this ability so let's go ahead and get into that one so this should be fun so here we go uh, so she went ahead and marked the target and you can see there she just teleported to Gwen like it was nothing and it was super far away and he did it again to Taka that's crazy like he actually walked away and okay okay also you guys gotta realize we just saw the ultimate too so the ultimate is where he basically or he she basically splits into four clones of herself where she is one of them and I'm assuming that you can dictate which one you are based on where you're targeting your ability. Uh, and so that's actually pretty cool. That mechanic is really, really cool. I don't know if it inflicted damage on the way out. Uh, it did. I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, so you inflict damage on the way out. Then it actually all comes back to every clone that was made the three extra clones that were made they will come back to you uh after x amount of seconds and everyone that actually hits a target on the way back i think it doesn't do more than one target i think it's the first target it hits will do damage to that target because you can see here I don't think Taka took damage with them coming on the way back, but maybe he just wasn't in the vicinity of the path the clones were coming. So it's kind of hard to tell. It might, it might, it might just do damage through all the targets it goes through, which would be crazy. Um, I would say, as far as balance purposes, as in my opinion, if it does in fact do damage through all the targets it goes through on the way back to you then I would say they would probably want to adjust it to where it's only the first target it actually goes through that it does damage to and then if on the way back it doesn't do any more once it hits that first target but I don't know maybe the damage isn't so substantial because it does two forms of damage it does damage on the way on the first part of it and then the second part when they come back so I don't know I feel like that's it's pretty nasty and she's gonna be really slippery she doesn't have stealth but she has a lot of mobility a lot of mobility she has that that blink and she has his ultimate uh, and then she can she has the uh, the little fan of knives too that we saw in the last video but man that's that's crazy and that teleport is just, it's gonna be so fun it's gonna be so freaking fun <laughs> Taka Dude, step aside, dude. Your days are over. It's going to be all about this hero. Uh, okay, so now we have the final one here, which is going to be uh, this one where it kind of emphasizes the ultimate a bit more here. So you can see there that she actually splits off into four different versions of herself. And then she went ahead and uh, blinked over to a target and then had them all collide into that target at the very end there, doing a bunch of damage. Um, but, like I said, as far as I can see, it looks like it just does damage to any target it goes through. Here, let me see if I can see if it does damage to these minions on the way through. It does. So, yeah, so this video clearly indicates that it can do damage through every target it goes through on the way back because it did damage when they actually collided into the hero at the very end 
where you know they came back to her and on the way back to her the minion that was in the path of the clone actually got or took damage and died as well uh, so therefore it does do damage to anything in its path that is going to be brutal in team fights because imagine if you do that and then you have the big group hurtled into one area all the enemies you know fighting your teammates all in one big ball a big clusterfuck <laughs> excuse my language uh and then you just teleport over with your ultimate coming back at you going through that entire mass of characters shredding through every single one that's 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 op man <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's like diminished returns in some fashion where it's like the more targets it goes through, the less damage it does to the next uh, next target. So each consecutive target it goes through does less and less damage. Maybe. Maybe that's how they're going to kind of balance that. And then, you know, if it still proves to be too strong, they can always increase the diminished returns. Um, is that the right phrase for damage? I know that's the right phrase for healing, <laughs> but I don't know. I I'm going to say diminished returns because uh, the return damage is being diminished every consecutive target it goes through. But anyway, so that's interesting. So we did kind of confirm that it does do damage through every target it goes through on the way back. Um, I'm curious though. I'm curious. I don't think I've seen in any of these videos if the clones are targetable so it's gonna be confusing to fight her and then she uses her ultimate and you're just like well which one is she i wonder if they're they are even targetable if they're not then it might be a little bit easier to actually determine which one she is before she you know reconforms her form of all of her different clones uh but if they are targetable that is annoying that's gonna be really annoying Okay, so I, I've hear, I, I've heard a lot of people saying this is such a copy of, I guess his name's Gushin, Gushin from Mobile Legends Trash. Uh, <laughs> but I guess that's the character that is very similar to this character or vice versa. I guess this character is more similar to that character because that other one came out first. Uh, but I have to say, if you guys play League of Legends, this dude... Sorry, this this girl is literally Talon. Talon to the T. He, he, she has, I keep wanting to say he, she has everything he has. So, Talon in League of Legends. I'll go ahead and put a little clip in the, the background here of Talon and his abilities. If I can find a good one. Actually, I can. I know how I can do it. So, if you can see he has like the... the the throwing knives, and I think for him it might be chakrams. I'm not sure, I don't remember, uh, but you guys will see. So he has the, the knives that go out, but his come back. But it goes out, like a cone. Then he has a blink. Uh, and so then following into his ultimate, he does a very similar style of an ultimate, where at the end, they all come back at him. <laughs> well, hey, 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 hey. I am not complaining. I can enjoy myself Vanglory's version of Talon to the fullest. And I am not mad about it at all. I don't want to give a rat's ass if you bring characters from other games and kind of put your little spin to it and make it possible in Vanglory. Hey, that's awesome. That just means more characters for us to play that are different, right? If you're playing Vanglory, unless you're like dumb like myself, then you're probably not playing League of Legends much, so therefore you're not really playing those heroes anyways, so you can play it in Vanglory. Um, but yeah, but for me, I'll be playing Talon in League of Legends as well as here, <laughs> apparently. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. That's my comparison. I have to say, screw your Gushin, this is Talon from League of Legends. Um, but there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video showcasing all the new tidbits of information that was released by Vanglory for this new character. She is going to be so freaking strong, I can tell already. But I feel like she's going to have a really high difficulty cap. Like, how hard it is to actually master her is going to be a lot more difficult than, say, Saw. 
<laughs> you know, although Saw has a, a level of complexity when it comes to surviving the onslaught of CC and Atlas pauldrons, but outside of that, his his mechanics is very. It's the most basic, I think, outside of maybe like Ringo. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Well, if you guys enjoyed this quick, well, a kind of quick video showcasing all the information, once again, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Later.